Hello chemists, my name is Kim and today we are going to be talking about how to identify and name organic acids as well as esters when we are looking at structural formulas, chemical names, and chemical formulas. You're going to be using table R of your New York State reference table if you are preparing for the New York State Regents exam and we are also going to practice how to um, either take a structural formula and write the name or write the structural formula given the name of an organic acid or an ester. I have a lot of videos that were made previously about naming alkanes, branched alkanes, ketones, aldehydes, and lots of other functional groups. So look out for those if you're looking for more practice with organic substances. So if we take a look at table R, we can see that our organic acids and our esters are right down in the middle of the table. If we look a little bit closer at them, we can see that they contain carbonyl groups, which is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen in the molecule. Organic acids and esters contain carbonyl groups and so do aldehydes, ketones, and amides. So you'll see these carbonyl groups, the C double bonded to oxygen, and many functional groups. What's important is to notice what else about each functional group makes it distinct. So we're going to start by taking a look at organic acids. Organic acids are made up of a carbon atom at the end of a carbon chain. This carbonyl is double bonded to an oxygen atom, that carbonyl carbon, and then single bonded to an alcohol group. So the carbon is bond double bonded to an oxygen, then single bonded to an oxygen, and then that oxygen is bonded to a hydrogen in turn. There can be any number of carbon atoms bonded before we get to the organic acid region of the molecule. To name organic acids, you first count the number of carbons in the chain. Don't worry about which way you're numbering, does not matter for car uh, organic acids. Then you name the parent chain as if it was an alkane using table P. You remove the E at the end of the alkane's name and add oic acid instead as the suffix. And so you will always know that you have an organic acid if the endings is oic acid. For example, propanoic acid is given in table R as the, as the, um, the sample organic acid. So let's look a little bit more closely at propanoic acid and the naming rules that I just talked about and notice how we got from the name to the formula. So propanoic acid, if I'm looking at that, I'm keeping in mind that that beginning part, the oic acid tells me that it's an organic acid. That should tell me that I need to look for the alkane chain. So propane would be the alkane that this is referring to because to name propanoic acid, I took the alkane, which would be propane. I took off the E and I added oic acid to the end. So I'm going to look at table P and find prop, that's three carbons, and that's going to guide me in determining what the structure of this acid must look like. So I've got three carbons. On that third carbon, I have a double bond to oxygen and then a single bond to another oxygen, which is bonded to a hydrogen. So I have a carbonyl group, that's the carbon double bonded to the oxygen, and then I have an alcohol group, that's the oxygen bonded to hydrogen. This is what makes it an organic acid. We're going to take a look now at how an ester is different. On first glance, esters look very similar to organic acids. They have that carbonyl carbon, and then they have a oxygen single bonded to the carbon as well. The difference is that in an ester, unlike in an organic acid, the carbonyl carbon, the carbon that is double bonded to the oxygen, is in the middle of the chain. So I have a carbon atom in the middle of a carbon chain, double bonded to one oxygen atom, and then single bonded to another oxygen atom. And then this is what really makes it different from an organic acid. On the other side of that oxygen atom, the carbon chain continues, and there can be another group of hydrocarbons. So the general formula is R, then we see the C double bonded to the O, single bonded to another O in the chain, and then another R group. So we see that the chain can continue on the left and right hand side of the general formula. Naming esters is a little bit more complicated than naming organic acids. We kind of consider there to be two parts of an ester. 
there's the number of carbons that are coming before you get to the carbonyl carbon in the chain. And then there's the number of carbons that are coming after the oxygen in the chain on the other side of the carbonyl carbon. So the first step that I take when I'm naming esters is I count the number of carbons that are coming off of oxygen on the chain that are on the other side of the carbon chain, the other side of the oxygen atom as the carbonyl carbon, as the carbon with the double bond. I figure out how many carbons there are on that side of the oxygen atom, and I determine what prefix that would be using table P. Then I count the number of carbons in the portion of the chain between the end of the molecule and the carbonyl column, so uh, carbon. So in other words, on the other side of the oxygen atom, on the side with the carbonyl carbon, how many carbon atoms are there? This is what I will think of as the parent chain. So the parent chain in an ester is the chain that contains the carbon that's double bonded to the oxygen or the carbonyl carbon. The other side of the oxygen's carbon chain is we're going to kind of treat as if it was like a branch off of off of my um, off of my carbon chain. You'll see what I mean in a moment. We name the parent chain as if it was an alkane using table P. And then to write the full name, we're going to go back to step one and use the prefix from step one as the first word. So it would be methyl or propyl. I would add YL to the end of the prefix as well um, as the first word in my name. And then in the second word, I would take the name of the parent chain's alkane, drop the E and add O8 at the end, O-A-T-E as my suffix in place of the E. So propane, propane becomes propane O8. This O8 tells me that I have an ester. That's the ending that keys me into the fact that I have an ester. Let's take a look at how methyl propanoate was named and see if we can get a better understanding for how to name these esters. So methyl propanoate, the methyl tells me the prefix for the number of carbon atoms that are coming off of the oxygen after the carbonyl carbon. Propanoate tells me that propane is the parent alkane chain. So if I go ahead and I look at table P, I see that prop means three. So I'm going to draw a three carbon chain. On the third carbon, I'm going to put a double bond to oxygen and then a single bond to another oxygen. On the other side of the oxygen, there goes my methyl group. That's my one carbon group. So my methyl group is to the right hand side on this diagram of my oxygen. My propanoate part of the name is coming from the left hand side of the oxygen. Let's do some practice. So take 30 seconds, pause the video if you need more time to decide for each of these molecules below, is it an organic acid or an ester? And what is its name? All right, so our molecule on the left-hand side here is an organic acid. Our molecule on the right-hand side is an ester. I can tell because it depends on whether or not that oxygen that is bonded, single bonded to the carbon, is bonded to another hydrogen or another carbon on its other side. Organic acids have that oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. Esters have that oxygen bonded to another carbon. Now let's think about the names. So we'll start with the organic acid. When naming an organic acid, we take the name of the alkane, take off the E, and add oic acid as the ending. I see one carbon. That prefix is meth, so that would be methane as the name of my alkane. So this would be methanoic acid, taking off the E of methane, adding oic acid. Now let's take a look at our ester. For our ester, we need to do two things. We need to count the number of carbons on either side of the oxygen in the chain. The parent chain name is going to come from the side of the carbons that has the carbon double bonded to the oxygen. And the prefix chain name is going to come from the other carbon side of the oxygen. So my left-hand side of the chain would be my parent chain. My right-hand side 
would be the prefix. Now, each of these carbons is one. So I'm using the same prefix here, but for my parent chain, I'm going to call this methane. And for my other carbon, I'm gonna to go to methyl. And I need to drop the E from my parent chain. So I'm gonna end up with methyl methanoate because to name a ester, I take the alkane name, take off the E, add O8 as an ending. And then I put the prefix with YL at the end as my first word. So methyl methanoate. Let's try another example. Just one molecule for you here. Is it an organic acid or an ester? Let's see if you can come up with its name. Take 30 seconds. Pause the video if you need more time. All right, so here we have an ester. I can tell because I have an oxygen in a carbon chain, right, with carbons on either side of that single bonded oxygen in the middle there. That means it's an ester, not an organic acid. If it were an organic acid, this would be an H over here, just an H, no carbon bonded H's. To name an ester, I need to look at the number of carbons on either side of the oxygen in the chain. The number of carbons, including the carbonyl carbon, the double bonded carbon, is going to be my parent chain. The other is going to be treated like a branch off of a hydrocarbon. And so I'm going to use the prefix with YL at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and count. I've got two carbons in my carbon chain that includes the carbonyl carbon. That's my parent chain. Two means this is gonna be ethane. I have one carbon over here on the other side of my oxygen. That's going to be where I'm gonna get that prefix from for the first word. If there's one carbon atom, it's going to be meth. If there's two, it's going to be eth. So this would be methyl ethanoate. I take the parent chain, I drop the E and I add O8, and then I take the prefix and I add YL to the end of it. So methyl ethanoate. Let's try this problem. Same deal, organic acid or ester, and then name it. All right, so we have an organic acid here because I have that O at the end. Instead of being bonded to another carbon, it's bonded to a hydrogen. When I have an organic acid, it's pretty simple to name. I just count my carbons. I find that prefix in my table. So this would be but, this would be butane. I'm gonna take off the E and I'm gonna name it butanoic acid. And that's it. Last question. So here we have an ester because my carbonyl carbon is bonded to an oxygen and then that oxygen is bonded to another group of carbons. So in naming an ester, I want to find the parent chain. That's gonna be the chain that contains the carbon with the double bond or the carbonyl carbon. I also wanna find the chain of carbons on the other side of the oxygen in the chain. And I wanna count the number of carbons in both of those separate chains. So my parent chain will be over here on the left because that's where the carbon with the double bond is. That's going to be propane because I count three carbon atoms. On the other side, I'm just going to get the prefix for the carbons on the other side of the oxygen. 
So there's four carbons. So this would be but as the prefix. Then I'm going to take the prefix and I'm going to add YL to the end. So butyl. I'm going to remove the E from the parent chain's alkane name. So propanoate. So this is butyl propanoate. The butyl comes from the prefix chain. The propanoate comes from the parent chain. Let's check back in on our learning goals. Hopefully you feel more comfortable identifying and naming both organic acids and esters given the structural formula, the chemical formula, or uh, taking the compound's name. Nice job today.